Hello and welcome to my studio. I'm going to be sharing something a little different with you today and I thought I would do a little, call it a demonstration, but more of a tutorial about painting an autumn scene in acrylics. I'm going to lead you through a series of step-by-step -step images of a acrylics painting where I've done a beautiful scene, lots of autumn trees and reflections in water. And then there's a PDF that you can also download in the comments section or perhaps on my website, wherever I send the link to. Help yourself to that. So let's have a look at this tutorial and uh, it might inspire you or help you with your next autumn scene. All right, here's the reference. And when you download the PDF, you can also get this reference there and try the painting out. I'm sure you'll agree that this reference ticks all the boxes for a beautiful autumn scene. Nice warm colors, rich color notes amongst the, the trees. Of course, the reflections taking all of those colors back into the scene so we get a beautiful harmony. So what I want to do is simplify the details into shapes of light and dark value and warm and cool color. We'll keep details to an absolute minimum. And to make this come off, I'm going to use large brushes, such as number eight long flats. Because I'm painting in acrylics, I like to use synthetic hair brushes. And I'll be using a brush called Krilla, C-R-Y-L-A, made by Adala Rani. So like I said, simplification is what it's all about. So I'm not painting leaves or twigs. Instead, I'm going to focus on the big shapes. Now, as far as materials goes, I'm going to be using Amsterdam acrylics. These are made by Royal Talons and a very affordable and vibrant range of acrylics. The colors I'm using are magenta, azo yellow medium, orange, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, naphtol red, sky blue, yellow ochre, and titanium white. The brushes are referred to, these are Krilla by De La Rani, and mostly number eights, long flat, filbert, and a round. I've got also a number 10 long flat as well. For some larger shapes, if I need it, I'll be painting on 300 gram, 140 pound watercolor paper. So the concept of the scene is something that looks a little more natural, not over the top, not too garish. I try to get the reflections to look natural as well and sort of emphasize color temperature. So making a start, I'm going to do a quick sketch just to set out the composition. You can look at the reference there and just start figuring out the placement of the big shapes, the, the trees, the reflections, the darker color that's going to be in the foreground, placement of the boats. The boats can be obviously very fiddly and detailed, but I will simplify them. And then the mass of trees on the right, very straightforward. Now starting in the blocking in phase, where I get in the big mass shapes. Getting into that tree line with some warm yellows and orange. I've mixed a bit of yellow, azo yellow with ultramarine to get those warm greens as well. And uh, ultramarine burnt sienna to get the, the darks. A strong orange with azo yellow and magenta. You can also use the naphtol red and the yellow to get those really hot orange colors. All right, there's a focal area which I'm going to emphasize over here. The sort of dark against the orange. And uh, that's going to be obviously another indication of a focal area with the boats curving in to the sort of rule of thirds, of course, the famous rule of thirds. Apply the blocking in stage in fairly rough brush strokes, keeping edges loose for the time being, and uh, avoid adding too much white paint to these colors at this early stage. We don't want to desaturate the autumn colors or make them too cool. Right, now into the reflections. The general rule for reflections is that they are the opposite of the primary shape being reflected, so dark shapes will be slightly lighter 
in the water and light shapes become slightly darker. Warm colors are cooler and cool colors slightly warmer. Don't exaggerate that, but it is something to keep in mind. Then there's the shape of the reflections depending on your viewpoint. Details also disappear in the reflections and it is much more of an abstract shape. So with these thoughts in mind, you still need to observe what is there. See those big shapes. Don't get intimidated by the fact that it is a reflection. Just think of it in terms of those big shapes. You can see big shapes like so. Or once you see them, just close your eyes slightly and you'll see those big shapes emerge. Put them down quickly and confidently and the painting will look as if it's painted with a lot more confidence. Techniques and colors. The white trees on the right are made by scraping the paint away with the tip of the painting knife and revealing the paper underneath. The boats are painted very loosely with a large flat brush. It's very tempting to get out a small brush and try to get the panels on the, the sides of the boat, etc. But we've got to try and resist that. It's a common error at an early stage of a painting to get bogged down in details. So keep the main idea central and continue to block in the big mass shapes of color. If your central idea or concept is successful, nobody's going to worry about whether you've left out details or not. Another important part of painting like this is considering color temperature. Now keep in mind what are the sunlight colors. These are the yellows and the blues are shadow colors. So by adding blue, you cool down a color and uh, turn it into a shadow color. So make sure your cool blue infused colors are in the shadows. Now obviously a sky color, that's a different thing entirely that is lit up by the sun. And for that, we've got the lovely cerulean blue up here in the sky. But the shadow blues are in these areas, as you can see, have cooled down the warm colors. In the sky, I've used cerulean blue, a little bit of white, and a touch of yellow ochre as well, just to warm things up. You can see I've started to soften the edges along the top of the trees there. Now we complete the blocking in stage. The final mass shape was the water itself, and it's a cooler version of the sky. The lower part is uh, darker, so over here just a bit darker, which kind of acts as a shadow and a lead in to the scene, and uh, step over and go around the painting. You can also investigate the trees over here, the boats. So everything's designed to keep the eye moving, in and around the painting. So the darker water in the foreground here, yeah, I've used a little more ultramarine to get that almost uh, blue-violet sort of color. Now I've gone on to the second layer of acrylics. And as you can see, layers make the colors come to life. The focal point of the distant trees is emphasized. And I've got uh, a little bit of um, extra saturation in color over here just to pull the eye over there. Here's a fairly strong edge, counter change between the orange and the darks, so, and you can move in to the distant trees up ahead. I've also painted in the shoreline along those trees, made that a little more prominent, and that helps to define the positive shape from the reflected shape. The edges of the trees against the sky are still kept soft and diffused, and that makes it look a little more natural over there. Now we get to the final touches. The water in the foreground is given a bit more life with a few diagonal ripples along the, the surface. I've used a white with a little bit of blue, so it's not too prominent, doesn't look too, too much overdone. The variety of shape and color also helps to add interest and a more natural feel. The boats have a bit more detail, and uh, still kept loose though, so the eye is not riveted to the boats and, and wandering around there looking at little details that aren't necessary. But the also the, the touches of sort of bluish green turquoise form a little bit of a complementary relationship with the oranges above. So although this is still just a sketch, I think the main idea 
of the vibrant autumn scene has been captured. Tranquility, there's enough interest between lights and darks and warms and cools to keep the viewer exploring the painting and the sort of charm of the autumn scene is still there. But I still painted fairly quickly. This is on a 10 by 12 or perhaps an A5 size. So you can work nice and quick with a large brush and try to keep things spontaneous and vibrant and not overworked. Keep the white paint to a minimum, mainly in the sky and water in the foreground, but in the trees you want to really emphasize the warmth of the paint. So very little white paint must go into those warm colors. And that's it. Now you can have a try and see how you go. Well, I hope that's helped you and given you some ideas and something you can try out for yourself. If you are interested in more on acrylics painting, you can have a look at my acrylics painting for beginners course. And I've also got a acrylics master lessons on landscape painting. You can find that all in my painting school. And there's also a free course for you up here and that'll also be on my painting school and you can have a look at what else is there if you want. All right until next time enjoy your acrylics painting and cheers for now. Well, I hope that's helped you and given you some ideas and something you can try out for yourself. So if you are interested in 
more on acrylics painting. You can have a look at my acrylics painting for beginners course. And I've also got a acrylics master lessons on landscape painting. You can find that all in my painting school. There's links as well to that. Of course, you have a free course for you up here. So check that out. And there's also a free course for you up here. And that'll also be on my painting school. And you can have a look at what else is there if you want. All right. Until next time, enjoy your acrylics painting. And cheers for now.